tonight, no need for alarm, according to the health minister, as the Ministry of Health goes on alert with one confirmed case of cholera in the country. And the Bahamas leads the charge on a committee to help Haiti, a country battling gang violence and a cholera outbreak. Plus, a family in mourning after an alleged suicide Thursday evening. What police want you to know about getting help for suicidal thoughts. And then coming up at 7.30, how you can help a friend or loved one struggling with suicide. The signs to look out for and where to get support. Our news at 7 starts now. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kendino Knowles. A recent cholera case has health officials beefing up protocols. Health and Wellness Minister uh, Dr. Darville, Michael Darville, says there's no need to be alarmed, but he's cautioning residents to follow safety protocols. Bertany McDermott has more on this tonight. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is on high alert for cholera, and Health Minister Dr. Michael Darville says there's no need for residents to panic. There's no need for no great alarm, but uh, I want the residents of Bahamas to know that our neighbor in close proximity, there's an outbreak and there's always the possibility. And so for us in the healthcare industry, we must be mindful of what is around us. His comments come one day after his ministry confirmed one case in New Providence. Dr. Darville says the new case is prompting health officials to activate new protocols. Closely monitoring our borders, uh, having uh, uh, more healthcare individuals in our surveillance unit, uh, high alert, uh, monitoring our, 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 our airports, our ports of entry, uh, and ships coming in. Cholera is an acute diarrheal illness caused by an infection of the intestine with the Vibrio cholerae bacteria. People can get sick when swallowing food or water contaminated with cholerae bacteria. The disease has broken out in Haiti, which confirmed 32 cases as of October 9th. While the recent case has a history of travel, Darville says the man did not travel to Haiti. As contact tracing continues in this recent case, Darville says healthcare facilities are prepared in the event of an outbreak. We have an emergency protocol that we can activate in the event that we have uh, cases that supersedes these isolated cases. Uh, they are available not only in New Providence, but also uh, Grand Bahama. And our team on the family islands are, are also on high alert on how do we isolate the cases. And so Noel Darville says there's no need to panic. He is advising Bahamians to continue practicing safety protocols. Proper hygiene, hand washing, proper cleanly water. Make sure you drink water that is uh, uh, well uh, protected. Be careful of well water. All of these things are potential risk factors. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. A site has been identified for the construction of a new hospital in New Providence. That's according to the health minister who adds that the new site should be revealed by December. While he was unable to identify the selected site, Dr. Darvo did talk about all the options. We had some options. We were looking at uh, uh, JFK. Uh, there's some land that is vested with the government, it's crown land. Uh, you know we were supposed to have a dual carriageway on Gladstone Road. Uh, there's a parcel of land there that we thought could be appropriate. Uh, there's a plot of land that we're looking at on the Papal Track area uh, that was vested in water and the, the utilities department and uh, we have one or two other pieces that have already been ruled out. Prime Minister Philip Davis mentioned that a site was identified in his national address on Tuesday. This as the construction of a new health care facility in New Providence and Grand Bahama was promised in the PLP's blueprint for change. Dr. Darville says he's pleased. I would like to let the Bahamian people know that uh, there is some studies, some geotechnical studies that are going on on the rock formation to ensure that it can handle uh, multi-story uh, capability. Uh, I am pleased with the site. Uh, the site is about 50 to 55 acres, so there's room for expansion. Uh, it's on high ground, which means that we don't have to worry too much about the elements of climate change. But uh, I'm pleased that as we're progressing with the final feasibility, it appears that we have a confirmed site. And to some sad news we are following tonight as police are investigating an alleged suicide after a teen was found hanging in a home in the Adastra Estates community. 
Police say they were called around 4 p.m. on Thursday after the victim was found by a family member with a sheet tied around his neck. As police investigate, they are appealing to members of the public who may have suicidal thoughts to reach out for help. The latest suspected suicide is the most recent in a number of similar incidents this year. Last month alone, police reported two suspected suicides. The first was a German worker who was found dead at a construction site on West Bay Street. Days earlier, a man was found hanging from a tree in a bushy area near Kelly Lane off Johnson Road. Coming up at 7.30, our Marlena Leonard will take a closer look at the issue and tell you how you can spot the warning signs. Meanwhile, prosecutors say they believe the murder of a man on bail was a revenge killing. Police say 40-year-old Andy Johnson was shot dead while at the Blue Hill Farmers Market on October 7th. At the time of his murder, Johnson was on bail for the shooting death of Brian Evans at a home on Dominica Way on December 2nd, 2019. Today, prosecutors accused Brandon Evans of avenging his brother's murder by killing Johnson. The 29-year-old accused of St. Andrew's Beach Estates didn't have to enter a plea to the murder charge when he appeared before Magistrate Shaka Serville. He was refused bail and the matter adjourned to November 30th for the presentation of a voluntary bill of indictment. We've got a lot more to get to, but for now it's time for your first look at temperatures around the country. Meteorologist Greg Thompson, he's standing by in the Weather Center. Greg? Yeah, thanks, Ken. You know, after a very wet evening last evening, we did uh, clear quite a bit today. Still got some partly cloudy skies outside our studios right now, though. Temperatures at 84. Northeast winds at 6 miles per hour. Your feels like temperature hanging out in the low 80s. On our Family Island temperature track, Northwest Bahamas, 81 degrees in Freeport right now, 80 in Marsh Harbor, over in Alistair Bimini, a couple of isolated showers nearby, temperature of 83. We picked that up also in Great Harbor Key, over in Nicholstown, Andros, 82, 84 here in the capital and in Governor's Harbor, temperatures there are near the 80 degree mark. Central Bahamas, temperatures are slightly warmer, we got some clouds down there, 81 in Arthurstown, Cat Island, Kemp's Bay, Andros, 85, we pick up 82 in Georgetown. Coleman Town, San Salvador, a few showers lingering in your neighborhood as well. 81 degrees, 83 in Deadman's Key and into the Southeast Palmas. Temperatures also in the low to mid 80s, there with 84s in Duncan Town, Ragged Island. We pick up 83s, well, actually in 83 in Colonel Hill Cricket Island. Delectable Bay, Acklands, 85. You also pick up an 85 in Abraham's Bay. Turks and Caicos Islands, our neighbors in Southeast, 87. And Matthew Town in Nag, where you are currently at 86. Satellite view. A lot of moisture that moved into the area, prefrontal trough and prefrontal activity affected us, dropped quite a bit of rainfall across portions of the northwest and central Bahamas, prompting some severe thunderstorm warnings yesterday evening and also last evening. Uh, those showers and thunderstorms have waned some now. Most of the activity is now pushed down towards the southeast, so we could see some clearing later on tonight. There's a front. The front is still to the north of the Bahamas across South Florida. That should get nearby tomorrow. That's a quick check on weather. Stick with us. Your look at the tropics and the extended forecast is still to come. Our news continues with an opportunity to study abroad in the United Kingdom. Why the British High Commissioner says Family Island residents are on their radar. But first, Abaconians will be the first to benefit from the Ministry of Housing's A Place to Call Home initiative. The first steps in the Rent to Own program. And later, what's your brand potential? If you don't know, two young creatives say they have the answer for you. Those stories and more tonight on Our News. It's the newest affordable housing initiative for employed Bahamians, a place to call home. Pilot phase will see 50 homes spread across the country. Housing and Transport Minister Joe Beth Colby Davis says the starting point is Abaco. Other islands will include New Providence, Grand Bahama, North Andres, North, North Eleuthera, San Salvador, Exuma, and Cat Island. 
A place to call home gives Bahamians the opportunity to save up for their first dream home while living in it at the same time. Over an agreed fixed period, not longer than 36 months, rent will be paid to the Department of Housing. A portion of the rent will go towards a down payment for the mortgage, property maintenance, and insurance costs. Colby Davis says the monthly rent will be paid to the Department of Housing. Successful applicants will be required to attend a home ownership education course through the Department of Housing and agree to financial coaching. A number of housing models will be used in a place to call home. The models will range from two bedroom, one bath to three bedroom, two bath models. A public communication will be released by the Ministry of Transport and Housing advising Bahamians when to register and interested applicants must register at www.mothbahamas.com. And off the topic of affordable housing, what does it mean to build wealth and how do you even get started? If some of those questions have crossed your mind, it may be time to create or reevaluate your financial roadmap. Are you confused about what that is? Well, Chief Operations Officer at the Bahamas International Securities Exchange, Holland Grant, explains it is goal-based investing that helps you to plan. A financial roadmap changes at different stages of your life. As you evolve, as you plan for children, property ownership, different things in your businesses, all of that stuff. He says those goals also help you to determine how much risk you are willing to take with your money to get returns. Risk equals return. So the higher the risk is, the more of a return you require for taking that investment. The lower the risk, the lower the return. So if you're retired, while you do want a bit of capital appreciation, what you really want is capital preservation. If you're early in your career, what you need is that capital appreciation because you can afford to take the risk. If, if you lose that money, you have a lot of time to make it up. Our news at 7.30 with our Italia Hall breaks down the basics or watch the full story tonight on rnews.bs. Well, between now and November 1st, Bahamians can apply for the Chevening Scholarship, the UK government's international scholarships program through chevening.org or on the Chevening Scholarship through the British High Commissioner's Facebook UK in the Bahamas. British High Commissioner to the Bahamas, Thomas Hartley, explains. Chevening is the UK's scholarship scheme for people who want to study a master's. If you want to do a master's course at any of those universities, then the Chevening scheme allows you to do it for free. It is fully funded, it's flights, it's accommodation, it's course fees and it's a stipend, all paid for. And it's for anyone who wants to go and do a year in the UK. There's no limit on age, there's no limit on subject, there's no limit on situation. The only thing that we test for is we're looking for people who will come back and commit themselves to public service of some sort for two years. Hartley added that while his often has seen multiple Nasuvian applicants, they haven't seen applications from family islanders and hopes to see more soon. He says the British High Commission will also be offering mentorship options for those applying in the next two weeks. In the next two weeks, uh, we're also trying to connect people who want to apply with Chevening alum so they can have a mentor, so they can have someone they can talk to. And uh, we, have, we have people who start their application and don't finish. And so by talking to a mentor, you can get advice on the sort of way to do that. I'm happy to be a mentor myself, so are my team, but so are the, all the Chevening scholars themselves. When our news comes back from the break, we turn our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world as the Dominican Republic cracks down on its border with Haiti. But first, Bahamian officials on high alert with violent crime and cholera outbreaks in Haiti. What the press secretary says the Bahamian government is working to do to help the country in need. Plus, breaking the sound barrier on this day in history. We'll tell you what else is making news when our news returns.
This is our news. Welcome back. Five people, including an off-duty police officer, are victims in the latest mass shooting in the United States. Police say a white male juvenile went on a shooting spree in residential Raleigh, North Carolina, Thursday night. While police try to find a motive, the suspect remains in critical condition after being contained in a residence. Several others are recovering from gunshot wounds. Once we received the 911 call yesterday, and we're so thankful to the community for that and for the continual updates that we received. Um, our officers immediately responded as well as our other partners. Um, once we arrived, we did um, find that there were two victims. And throughout the investigation, we ended up with five victims who were deceased and then our two who were injured. We mourn and share the loss of not only our officer, but all the victims of this senseless gun crime. With only 37 days in office, Britain's new Prime Minister Liz Truss continues to struggle to stabilize her country's financial status and fulfill campaign promises to cut taxes. She fired her finance minister, Kwesi Kwarteng, Friday while appointing Jeremy Hunt, a former foreign and health secretary. Parts of an economic package were scrapped in a bid to stay in power. She's also allowing a key business levy to rise to try and raise 18 billion pounds. Problems for trust began immediately after winning the Conservative Party's leadership last month when she promised vast tax cuts and deregulation as a means to turning around years of stagnant growth in the British economy. But the Bank of England had to step in after borrowing and mortgage costs surged. Despite her best efforts, Truss's position is in jeopardy. It was right in the national interest that I made the decisions I've made today to restore that economic stability so we can deliver, first of all, helping people through this winter and next winter with their energy bills, but also making sure that our country is on the long-term footing for sustainable economic growth. Thank you very much, everybody. Prime Minister, are you going to say sorry? The United Nations Security Council wants to introduce sanctions, an asset freeze, and arms embargo against anyone threatening Haiti's peace and stability. One of the first intended targets is a man named Jimmy Shirajer, known as Barbecue. He is named as one of Haiti's most influential gang members. Haiti's ongoing gang violence and shortage of drinking water just go worse, or just got worse, that is, with a deadly cholera outbreak. Meanwhile, Haiti's closest neighbor, the Dominican Republic, has responded to the chaos there by cracking down on migrants and a military buildup at the border between the two countries. Dominican President Louis Abinader has announced the purchase of six helicopters, 10 aircraft, 21 armored vehicles, and four Adi riot trucks. The move is also raising fears that the long-existing xenophobia against Haitian migrants will deepen. One of Haiti's most powerful gangs has taken control of fuel supplies, leading to water and food shortages. The report that's being released today, the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification Report, shows that the severity and the extent of food insecurity in Haiti is getting worse. The report says that according to the numbers we have, 4.7 million people in Haiti are facing acute food insecurity. 1.8 million of them are facing emergency levels of food insecurity. Well, back here at home, as crime continues to surge in Haiti, causing a humanitarian crisis, Bahamian officials say they are on high alert. Haiti's economic and social issues have worsened since the assassination of Haitian President Jovenel Moïse in July 2021. Nonstop violence continues to destabilize the country as gangs commit violent crimes. CARICOM member states have taken notice. Press Secretary Clint Watson says the Davis administration is leading a council with CARICOM to figure out what the region needs to do in response to Haiti. The Bahamas is leading on that, of course, because of the proximity of Haiti to us, and we're, we're more vulnerable than any of the other Caribbean nations when it comes to Haiti's unrest, and we are concerned about it. Um, and so what, as we meet, and meetings will take place over the next few months, there will be meetings that will take place regarding Haiti, the Bahamas will be at the table. And at the end of the day, whatever decision is made, we'll make sure that, it, that we have the resources for it, and that whatever decision and participation the Bahamas makes is in the best interest of the Bahamas. Now, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has proposed that countries under the UN umbrella send a rapid action force to assist Haiti's police force remove a threat posed by armed gangs. Our Jamila Misik has the Foreign Affairs Minister's response in our news at 7.30.
Still to come in our news, today in history, find out interesting facts about the day that was October 14th with an assassination attempt on an American president. Plus, why branding yourself and your worth is so important in your 20s. Two young experts weigh in. Increasing disinterest in relationships or favorite activities may be warning signs that a loved one is struggling with mental health. A mental health counselor gives her professional advice when our news returns. Welcome back to our news. It's time now for a look at today in world history. As always, we've got some interesting facts about the day that was October 14th, including about the late great Martin Luther King. In 1912, U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt was shot in an assassination attempt in Milwaukee. His thick coat and a bundle of paper in his breast pocket saved his life, escaping with only a flesh wound. He went on to deliver his scheduled speech with the bullet still in his body. And then in 1947, American test pilot Chuck Yeager became the first person to break the sound barrier. For many years, aviators believed man wasn't meant to fly faster than the speed of sound. But that changed on this day in 1947 when Yeager flew the X-1 over Rogers Dry Lake in Southern California. Too many people find themselves living amid a great period of social change. And yet they fail to develop the new attitudes, the new mental responses that the new situation demands. That was Baptist minister and social activist Martin Luther King Jr., who was named winner of the Nobel Prize for Peace for his work on civil rights and social justice. This picture showing a program signed by the civil rights leader honoring him for his work. This exact program is on exhibit in the Morehouse College Martin Luther King Jr. collection in Atlanta, which includes unpublished sermons and documents his civil rights campaign. All those to whom truth is beauty and beauty truth, and in whose eyes the beauty of genuine brotherhood and peace is more precious than diamonds or silver or gold. I think we all know, uh, basically, that we want to be men. We want to be persons judged not on the basis of the color of our skin, but on the basis of the content of our character. And after years of creating engaging content for millennials and Gen Z's, young content creators Charlie Thompson and Keith Bryan Jr. are taking their content from off the screen and into the classroom. The duo is sharing their knowledge during a live event that's happening this weekend. Their goal, to teach young persons how to beef up their brands. Thompson and Bryan are also looking to teach them to thrive as they navigate adulthood through inspiring and informative Instagram posts and live videos. This year we decided that we wanted to give more value to those who follow us and that's where the Unleashing the Brand and New workshop came to mind. Last month we actually hosted a guide to branding webinar and there was a great turnout so we decided to take this up a notch and we believe that young persons lack actual opportunities to brand themselves and network with other people and that's the real reason why we decided to do this event. She also reiterated why branding and networking are important for those in their 20s. 
when you look at persons in their 20s, it's very hard to network. People feel as though sometimes they don't know who to reach out to. So that's why we believe that giving persons an opportunity to learn more about branding and networking and actually providing a supportive community would help other young people to just come together and actually help each other as it relates to networking and getting opportunities. All right, and if you're interested in that event, it is scheduled for Sunday at 2 p.m. at the Cancer Society of the Bahamas. Now, to watch that story again and for all of today's top stories, visit ournews.bs. That does it for us in News at 7. Joining us now is our Italia Hall with the latest headlines. Italia? Yes, Not to get to, but interesting perspective on building a personal brand, right? Yeah, I mean, we are in a digital era, so yeah. it just makes sense, right? Things are changing yeah. and cholera concerns looming as the Ministry of Health is on alert. New health protocols activated as the Bahamas is on cholera alert with one confirmed case. What that means for you and your health. Is the Bahamas in a position to help Haiti as it battles gang violence and cholera? The Foreign Affairs Minister says it's up for discussion. And time to reach out. A mental health counselor says you should be on the lookout to help prevent a mental health crisis for a loved one. And the effort the Prime Minister has pledged to make to meet with grocery retailers with 38 new items on the price control list. Our news at 7.30 starts in a moment. Welcome to our news and thank you for joining us. I'm Italia Hall, topping news tonight. Health officials revealing more about that confirmed cholera case. It turns out he had no recent travel to Haiti, the country that is currently experiencing an uptick in cases. Health Minister Dr. Michael Darrell. Uh, there's no need for no great alarm, but uh, I want the residents of Bahamas to know that our neighbor in close proximity, there's an outbreak and there's always the possibility. And so for us in the healthcare industry, we must be mindful of what is around us. Now cholera is caused by an infection of the intestine. The disease has broken out in Haiti, which confirmed 32 cases as of October 9. Dr. Darvel says the local case has health officials beefing up protocols. As for the new health protocols they are activating, well, the traditional protocols is more uh, closely monitoring our borders, uh, having uh, uh, more healthcare individuals in our surveillance unit, uh, high alert, uh, monitoring our, 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 our airports, our ports of entry, uh, and ships coming in from various different jurisdictions. And so we'll move into gear two, and it's more involved with surveillance. Will the Bahamas answer the call to assist in alleviating the crisis in Haiti amid rampant violence in that country? Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell says that's up for discussion. Jamila Music reports. The UN Secretary General has asked for a multinational force to be assembled, and it may be that we are going to be called to be part of that force to intervene to bring order into Haiti. That's Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell explaining why the Bahamas is keeping a careful eye on what's happening in Haiti. Press Secretary Clint Watson confirming that the government is leading a council with CARICOM to figure out what the region needs to do in response to Haiti. The Bahamas is leading on that, of course, because of the proximity of Haiti to us, and we're, we're more vulnerable than any of the other Caribbean nations when it comes to Haiti's unrest, and we are concerned about it. Um, and so what, as we meet and meetings will take place over the next few months. There will be meetings that will take place regarding Haiti. The Bahamas will be at the table. And at the end of the day, whatever decision is made, we'll make sure that, it, that we have the resources for it and that whatever decision and participation the Bahamas makes is in the best interest of the Bahamas. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez has proposed that countries under the UN umbrella send a rapid action force to assist Haiti's police force remove a threat posed by armed gangs. But Haiti is not the only 
only country in the region experiencing a surge in violence. The Turks and Caicos is also facing major issues. Watson also addressing talks about the Bahamas' decision to send officers to TCI to help fight crime. When you prepare to govern, you understand that some of the ways of solving your problems here at home is being able to find the nucleus of the problem and solving it there. And, and we make decisions based on what we believe our intelligence tells us. And you will see the result of that. Uh, we're not talking or doing, making decisions just haphazardly. We're not going to ignore the crime problem here. We're going to the root of the problem. And sometimes that means going outside of your country, in your region, to help fix the problem that eventually comes to your region. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jamila Misik. Thanks, Jamila. Now, the Ministry of Health is on high alert for cases of measles. The revelation comes as there are outbreaks of measles around the world. Darvel says healthcare facilities are prepared. Our public health department have the capability with trained individuals to address these issues. With that being said, uh, it's important for us to be mindful that we need to be ready for anything that comes our way and uh, to be able to ramp up our surveillance and to bring other assets from other departments from the Ministry of Health to assist us if uh, in the event that we do have uh, any spread of any kind. The health minister also confirming the country's stocked up on vaccines for measles. He says in the last two years there's been a decline in vaccinations, but he says the ministry is working to address the issue. COVID-19 has uh, affected uh, our immunization uptake and we are pleading and we are moving with our immunization team uh, to ensure that we get as many uh, of those who are, who are missed uh, to be a part of the vaccination program. Monkeypox is also still on the health ministry's radar and vaccines will be in country soon, says the health minister. This evening, the Ministry of Health and Wellness revealing the Bahamas will receive its first doses of monkeypox vaccines on Monday afternoon. Now, last month, Dr. Darville said the Bahamas secured 1,400 doses of the monkeypox vaccine. We are on board with PAHO. Uh, we have uh, submitted our resources. Uh, the Bahamian people can rest assured that uh, the minute as the monkeypox vaccine is available, the Bahamas will have access to them from PAHO. So no idea as to when... I cannot give you an exact date. It was a discussion we had at the conference in Washington, D.C., and we were reassured that in the short term, not the long term, those countries that are part uh, of the program from PAHO will have access to these vaccines in country. And another news tonight, a series of recent suicides, including yesterday's alleged teen death by suicide, has many asking what can be done to help those who are struggling with their mental health. Our Melina Leonard has answers, as well as the latest from investigators coming up in just a moment. But for now, a hot and steamy evening heading into the weekend. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with our current conditions. Greg. Thanks, Italian. Welcome, everybody, for our first look at weather on this TGIF. 84 degrees outside our studios right now in the partly cloudy skies. Much improved conditions out there. The winds are now out of the northeast at 6 miles per hour, and your feels like temperature at 82 degrees. On our satellite, a lot of moisture associated with the prefrontal trough moves through the uh, capital and the northwest Palmas overnight, dumping quite a bit of rain. We got up, up to at least 2 to 3 inches in some locations. Some of that are uh, still hanging out on the streets and in some areas. Most of the activity Activity is now pulled out towards the east. We are still seeing a couple of isolated showers moving just across the Grand Bahama area. That's all associated with actually the leading edge of the front, which is still across Florida. We should see that frontal boundary push towards the south tonight to tomorrow with much improved conditions expected for the weekend. That's your first look at weather. Stick with us a look at the tropics and your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, a woman in custody for the death of a Cable Bahamas employee. What police can reveal so far? And the Prime Minister's pledge to meet with grocery retailers about changes to price control items, how it may affect your next trip to the grocery store. Plus, building wealth begins with the basics of saving and investing. Financial experts explain the dollars and cents of it when our news returns.
A man who stabbed his girlfriend following an argument four years ago has pleaded guilty. 31-year-old Kevin Gardner, who was on bail, pleaded guilty to manslaughter in the May 4 death of 2018 death of Thea Grea Hanna. He was initially charged with murder, but the charge was reduced to manslaughter in a plea deal. Justice Gregory Hilton sentenced Gardner to 15 years in prison in accordance with the plea agreement. However, the sentence was reduced to 11 years and six months to account for the time Gardner spent in custody before he got bail. The court also recommended that Gardner take anger management classes and enroll in vocational training while in prison. Police are questioning a woman in connection with the murder of Marcus Hinsby. The 30-year-old woman was taken into custody yesterday. Hinsby, a cable Bahamas employee, was found back on September 26 in his Benito apartment off West Bay Street with multiple lacerations. Co-workers found him after they were concerned when he did not show up for a work meeting. Police are investigating an alleged suicide after a teen was found hanging in a home in the Dastra Estates community. Police say they were called around 4 p.m. on Thursday after the victim was found by a family member with a sheet tied around his neck. As police investigate, they are appealing to members of the public who may have suicidal thoughts to reach out for help. The latest suspected suicide is the most recent in a number of incidents this year. Last month alone, police reported two suspected suicides. The first was a German worker who was found dead at a construction site on West Bay Street. Days earlier, a man was found hanging from a tree in a bushy area near Kelly Lane off Johnson Road. Coming up in just a bit, Marlena Leonard will take a closer look at the issue and tell you how you can spot the warning signs. Some grocery retailers threatening to withhold some items off the shelves. This coming after Prime Minister Philip Davis announced in a national address on Tuesday that 38 items have been added to the price control list that includes diapers, chicken and eggs. During the office of the Prime Minister's weekly press briefing, Press Secretary Clint Watson acknowledging that they are aware of concerns expressed by grocery retailers. Watson says the Prime Minister will meet with those retailers on Tuesday. We want to provide an environment where retailers can thrive, but also where consumers and behemoths can only thrive, but they can survive. So while you thrive, we want to make sure our people can survive. And being able to find that balance is what the Prime Minister is doing. That's why he's meeting with them on Tuesday to be able to ensure that actually happens. From mutual funds to pension plans, how you build wealth is a matter of preference and planning. Christina Dragovitz met with some financial experts as they marked World Investor Week. She breaks down the basics. 10 million net worth by 2025, 100 million net worth by 2035. I like the timelines with this as well. Yes, 10 million annual revenue lines. Yeah. No matter your goal, financial experts agree that the road to any goal is to set out a plan to get you there. Chief Operations Officer at the Bahamas International Securities Exchange, Holland Grant, explains how financial experts can help. The financial roadmap changes at different stages of your life. As you evolve, as you plan for children, property ownership, different things in your businesses, all of that stuff. So that's the basic idea of goal-based investing. So are you saving or investing? Experts say the key to growing wealth is knowing where you are and where you want to be. Savings is money you need for a rainy day. I am not working this month. I need to have that income to meet that. Investing is money that's working for you for the long term. Savings is in case of emergency in the short term. Investing is for the long term. The advice? Have two bank accounts. One that you keep the ATM card for and the other that you limit access to. Grant says planning to meet a goal can help you to budget, delay gratification, and invest in your future self. We all make dumb financial decisions at times. So the one thing I stress is if you make one, don't let it define the future decisions you make, right? Because just because you started off on a poor financial path or poor educational path, life path, whatever, doesn't need, mean you need to continue on it. And if you need help getting started, the experts and advisors at RF Bank and Trust say they're available to help. Reporting for Our News, I'm Christina Dragovich. When our news comes back from the break, the signs that someone may be struggling with their mental health. Would you know what to do? Well, a counselor outlines how you can help. 
Plus, coming up in sports for tonight, Sean A. Miller Weibo. She could be your world athlete of the year. We'll tell you how that can possibly happen. We'll also tell you how the New Province Softball Association has to reset as rain washes out night one of the championships. It's all coming up in sports. our news welcome back after a series of suicides in recent months many are asking what can be done to help those who are struggling with their mental health our Marlena Leonard spoke with a Grand Bahamian mental health counselor to discuss the warning signs and measures the public can take to protect their mental health if you're having thoughts of my purpose or do I have a reason to live that sort of thing if, if, if you're having more and more of those thoughts that's a good sign to seek some help Jessica Russell, a mental health counselor at the Family Medical Center in Grand Bahama, tells us some of the warning signs for a loved one who may need support. Obviously, the big signs would be um, th really negative um, comments about the self, about the world, expressing feelings of hopelessness, of feeling like a burden, of not having a reason to live. There are those big sort of warning signs, but there are subtle ones. It's change in sleep, change in diet, change in hygiene could be another sign. Russell also notes that increasing disinterest in relationships or favorite activities can also be an indication that it may be time to reach out. It's worth having the conversation from a place of compassion and not a place of judgment, which is where, unfortunately, people tend to default to. Um, so that that's important approaching it with compassion instead of a uh, you should be doing this or why aren't you doing that or what's wrong with you none of those are helpful the person-centered therapist also says having a strong support system from family and friends can help but that it's okay and important to know the limits of your ability to help it is absolutely okay to say i don't have I can't help you through this. I don't know what to do from here. It's why and that's okay to say. I don't I don't know how to help you and maybe we should find somebody who could. Russell even offered some tips to help protect yourself from extra stressors, including a healthy diet, sleep schedule, and practicing healthy boundaries, taking care not to overcommit yourself and to remember that no can be a complete sentence. Reporting for our news, I'm Marlena Leonard. Thanks, Marlena. Now, track star Shauna, Shawnee miller Weebo looking to win another race, this time off the track. Meanwhile, rain washes out night one of the softball championships. Marcellus Hall is up now with a check on sports. All right, thanks, Natalia. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Well, Shawnee miller Weebo once again in the news in a rather very good way, as a matter of fact, as she's in line to potentially be the athlete of the year. She's one of the last set of nominees. Of course, the cutting down process will take place. She's in the top 10 guys right now. That's going to require your help. For more, let's take a look. After another dynamic year on the track, Bohemian track phenom Shawnee Milowebo now finds herself in position to win yet another type of award, this time without ever actually having to run. At least not quite the way we think of it in traditional sense. Shawnee miller Weibo up for World Athlete of the Year. She's one of the final 10 nominees for the prestigious thing. And as it stands, you can be a part of the process. All you have to do is log on to World Athletics, Watch 2022, and vote for Shawnee miller Weibo. Let's get her into the top five and eventually in there as the World Athlete of the Year process has already begun. The cut down process will be coming real, real fast. Make sure you vote for Shawnee Miller Weibo as she goes for the World Athletics World Athlete of the Year. Good job right there by Shawnee Miller. Well, if you were looking for softball last night, 
sorry to disappoint. Mother Nature had different ideas. New Province Softball Association Championships were scheduled to get underway yesterday evening. Ladies Championship game one was underway between the RAB operators and the defending champion Sunshine Auto Wildcats. Rain came down, forcing postponement of play. It'll resume action on Saturday. It'll be game one on the ladies' side. RAB operators and the Sunshine Auto Wildcats going at it, followed in the men's on the men's side. Uh, by a pretty good one there as well. We'll give you details on that coming up on Monday as they get all the action in. And that is your look at sports here on this Friday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Please enjoy your weekend. Back to you, Italian. Don't go just yet. Greg is back in the Weather Center with your extended weekend weather outlook. Stay with us. Welcome back to our news. We saw heavy rainfall in the capital last night and there still may be some stray thunderstorms in the area. Greg is back in the weather center with our weekend weather planner. Greg. Thanks again, Natalia, and welcome back, everybody. We are still tracking Carl, which is sitting out there in the Bay of Campeche. Weakening as we speak, the winds are up to 45 miles per hour, has moved towards the south. Uh, very slow pace, but it's expected to make that turn towards the southwest and move into South Mexico. Uh, by tomorrow, as the system moves into the air, we expect it to weaken to a remnant low, but a lot of showers and isolated thunderstorms still associated with it will affect portions of the Yucatan Peninsula, Peninsula as well as Mexico. The remainder of the tropics, quiet. We are watching a tropical wave out there well to the south of the Cape or the Cabo Verde Islands. National Hurricane Center giving that a low chance for formation over the next couple of days. And of course, cross area, frontal boundary across South Florida with some moisture still associated with it. Should push into the Northwest Palmas late tonight and continue pushing towards the south while it falls apart. Behind that, nice change in the air mass as high pressure will be building in. Slightly breezy conditions expected for the Northwest Palmas for tomorrow. Speaking of boating conditions, Northwest Palmas, in northeast to east flow at around 50 knots. Sea is running three to five feet over the ocean. Your high tide will be at 11.54 tonight. For the central and southeast Palmas are more east to southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. They will fall light and rebel at times. And your seas will be running two to four feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your extended forecast, some isolated showers tomorrow expected, but uh, that high pressure will be building in. And we're looking for beautiful conditions for, well, balance of the weekend and into early next week. And then we expect another front to get near sometime by Wednesday. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe Friday evening and have a beautiful weekend, everybody. Thanks, Greg. And for all of today's top stories, be sure to head over to rnews.bs. Thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Natalia Hall. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a great evening.